This is Terry Howell from the Talk Back Fans Podcast, and you're listening to the Barbecue Central Show with the incomparable host, Greg Rempe. Start the game! Let's go! We'll do it live. Okay. Well, do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike your match, and... Oh. Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. Welcome to the really big barbecue central show. This is the show that talks about all things important to the world of barbecue and grilling. The show originating from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame City, Bomb City, USA, Cleveland, Ohio, the barbecue capital of the North Coast. I am your program host, Greg Rempe. Happy to have you aboard here on your Tuesday evening's live fire fun and frivolity show. If you want to jump in the show this evening, or if you would like to follow the show during off show hours, here's how you do all of that. You can get in touch with the show by sending an email to Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. Follow us on all the social media channels at BBQ Central Show. And be sure to subscribe. Subscribe to the show podcast feed on your favorite podcast platform. Anything else you want to find out about the show can be found at the main website, the BBQ Central Show.com. And here's what's happening in case you didn't get the newsletter coming up in about 12 minutes from now. However, sitting in for the entire show this evening, the pitmaster of Go Big or Go BBQ, Aaron Huntelman is here this evening. There's Aaron right there. Aaron, how are you this evening? Doing great. Great. Great to have you aboard here. So uh, just lay out till we get to your proper segment. Then there'll be lots of conversating. And then you are at that point just sitting in on the show, guest hosting. Let's not say guest hosting. Uh, peanut gallerying, <laughs> if you will. So if you have questions you want to ask uh, Derek, which we'll talk about here in a second, yep. or of course we know what's happening in the second hour, uh, you are going to be mandated to take part in all of the nonsense that's going to be going on in the second hour. So Aaron Huntelman sitting in during the show here this evening, and we will be talking with him next segment about a bunch of stuff, not the least of which is how he is helping pitmasters across the country cheat to win at barbecue competitions, and we'll talk to him about that a little bit later on. After Aaron's segment at 14 past, we will welcome back the fourth Tuesday of the month in the 35 past the first hour segment guest, creator of DerekRiches.com, Derek Riches. Aaron and I were talking before the show, and we couldn't remember, but we thought maybe remembered that we might have skipped Derek last month. Derek will remember but now that I'm thinking about it, maybe we did. I don't know. It's, it's, it's not that Derek is forgettable by any stretch of the imagination. It's just so much has transpired in the last four weeks. Sometimes I get a little hazy on who's shown up in their designated recurring slots and who I have had to usurp them with from a guest standpoint. So Derek Rich is nonetheless 35 past the first hour, that's for sure. And he's got a number of takes on a lot of the different topics we've been talking about here on the show over the last various weeks. And then we move to the second hour because it is the fourth Tuesday of the month. And in the second hour, it can only mean one thing. We refire the embedded correspondence segment. And as I just mentioned, Aaron Huntelman from Go Big or Go Barbecue will also be sitting in. So we have a brand new sheet of 100% surety questions to go over. We also have changed the rules as of last month. So if a segment, or I'm sorry, if a question requires deeper digging in the past, we have said, no, we're not going to do that. You just give me the yes or the no. We move on to the next question. But we've thrown caution to the wind. We've realized over time, people want to know what's going on in our minds. How are we coming to this yes or no answer? And if it deserves to be drilled down into, then damn it, that's what we're going to be doing from now on. 
You can look forward to that in the second hour. We also have some other topics that we can dig deeper into outside of the 100% assurity questions, not the least of which is what happens when you're using a great branded knife and it snaps in half? What happens then? We will talk about it potentially as time allows. So that's what's happening here this evening. Aaron Huntelman, all show in studio guest. I don't remember the last time we actually had an in studio guest that wasn't related to me. And at last check, Aaron is not relate, definitely not related to me. And we have Derek Riches, and then we have the embedded correspondence in the second hour. So that's how the show's shaking out. You can follow me socially, Instagram, X, TikTok, and Snapchat, all at BBQ Central Show. We say good evening to those of you watching through our video streaming platforms this evening. Facebook and Twitch slash BBQ Central Show. You can also watch the show on YouTube, which is YouTube.com slash at BBQ Central Show. And we also have a YouTube poll question of the week. And this week I'm asking you, Offset Pits produce the best tasting barbecue that you can eat, yes or no. And currently, well, just like the poll ended last week that I didn't tell you about in a 50-50 tie, we are currently sitting at a 50-50 tie. Uh Yes and no, all are agreeing and combating each other at the same time. So we will get Aaron's take here in just a second once we get him in his traditional segment. And or his uh, his own say whatever. Aaron's going to be coming on here in a few minutes. We're going to be talking, and I'll ask him as the lead question. So, Aaron, if you're not paying attention yet, that's the lead question this evening. Is Offset Pits produce the best tasting barbecue you can eat? Yes or no? So we'll see what Aaron has to say about that, and we will update you through the show. We'll ask Derek as well as the embedded correspondent. So let's start here this evening. I'm going to try and get ahead of the emails that came in and that are bound to come in from the Susie Bullock interview last week. Yes, there was a mic issue. Yes, it was noticeable. There is a reason that I didn't pull the plug on the whole segment because after she reconnected, I could hear what I thought was a echoey kind of room because last time she was on She was in the same room. There was a similar echo. I didn't realize until after the site, not echo, but a a big room noise. The trained ear can hear it. Trust me. I know you heard it, but I didn't realize until after the segment when I was emailing back and forth with her husband, Todd, that the mic that you saw in the picture was actually suddenly not performing and that he picked the computer mic in order to keep the segment going because there was no backup USB mic to install right on the spot. If she would have been in the closet with a bunch of clothes around her, it probably would have sounded 100% better than it did. And if it was a show without video, I would have told her to find somewhere like that to go. So we would have foregone all the echoing. We would have made it sound a little bit more compact. But I didn't know for sure if it was the mic or not or if it was the room or not. So now I know. And... We are also going to do a sound check before next quarter's visit just to make sure everything is right. I had given them a pass on sound checks before because this is the first time this has ever happened. Todd, usually a very technically savvy guy. So I forgive all of this just once. Never again. Make sure it never happens again, Todd. Otherwise, you are going out. What this should show all of you that question my demand for a mic for all of my guests is how much better the production sounds if you have that microphone. If you listen to the first hour, Stephen Reichlin, Wes Wright, both sounded like they were right in studio with me, just like Aaron Huntelman from Go Big and Go Barbecue was right in the studio with me, except Aaron is in the studio with me. Stephen was in Martha's Vineyard, and Wes Wright was in Detroit, but they sounded just like they were right here with me. Contrast that to the second hour. Susie ended up sounding like all the other shows who have guests, including national talk radio shows, who don't demand high-level audio from their guests. I still don't know why that is, but that's just the way it is. Feedback from fans on past shows. Tom in Kentucky writing. Mr. Rempe, Roger Daly of Blackstone was an absolutely incredible guest. Thank you for putting him on the show. I had no idea about that omnivore griddle plate that he had mentioned. And I also didn't know the biggest secret in the griddle industry is the warping of the plate when frozen food goes onto it. That was very enlightening. 
of the show, podcast only, regards Tom. Tom, what's even more exciting than that is I'm getting a Blackstone. <laughs> Rule number three of the show. If it's free, it's me. Derek posted on the Facebook show group page, after hearing Greg say all of the older shows are now available on all platforms, I have started listening to the shows from 2008. It is good to know that even way back then, he touts the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, and yet he still maintains his record of not visiting there. Dare I say that he called in an anonymous tip to the TSA about Meathead's Rub being the bomb to keep that streak alive. You know what? You're not wrong. (laughs) Derek, you're not wrong. I'm not admitting to him, but I'm not saying that you're wrong. Lastly, Paul in Florida... Greg, I've heard you mention the Food Network barbecue shows various times over the past couple weeks, but did you know season two of Barbecue Showdown released earlier this summer on Netflix, and it's a great watch. They included a large sand area with various contraptions competitors had to cook on, and they are more barbecue people cooking on than barbecue brawl. Enjoy your show. Thanks for your excellence and the production that you put in each week. Regards, Paul. Paul, I did know that. I am not watching that. There's a backstory to that, Paul, that I'm not going to bore you with at the moment. But there is a reason why I'm not watching it. For now. And I'm not saving it for the retirement home like John Solberg would. In case you didn't know, we have an in-studio guest, Aaron Hunselman. He'll be up here in just one moment before we get to him. I'm asking you this question aside from if Offset Pits produce the best-tasting barbecue you could ever eat. Are you tired of settling for mediocre grilling experiences. It's time to step up your game, bring the ultimate flavor and cooker to the backyard barbecues, Pits and Spits Charcoal Grills, offering the highest quality live fire cooking experience you can get in the market today. Using either wood or charcoal, their solid fuel grills produce those classic flavors when you're looking for the time to fire up that grill with family and friends or all family and friends. With a large adjustable fuel tray, you can raise and lower the fire to control that fine-tuned heat temp. This is their take on a Santa Maria-style grill, if you've seen those around the internet. Check them out online, pitsandspits.com slash bbqcentral, and Pits and Spits is spelled with a double T. So that's the double T on the pitsandspits.com slash bbqcentral, and use promo code charcoalcentral, all one word, charcoalcentral at checkout for $150 off any charcoal grill. As we say each and every week, it's an heirloom piece. So you buy it now, you cry, but you're buying the best, or you're only crying once. Your kids will never cry. They'll cry from happiness when you bequeath it to them at your time of your ultimate demise. And then your grandkids will be even happier, shedding more tears because it's like, this was grandfather's. And then great, we'll pass it right down the line. It's great. Pitsandspits.com slash BBQ Central and 150 bucks off when you use promo code Charcoal Central at checkout. We are back with Aaron Huntelman, the king of Mr. Brisket here in Cleveland. Stick around. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Show studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. Welcome back. This portion of the show being brought to you by CookinPellets.com, your number one source for quality wood pellets for all your pellet-driven cookers. You visit CookinPellets.com to see what they are selling, and then you go to Amazon.com or Lowe's.com or Walmart.com. Take advantage of all the options and great shipping rates there. I'm not telling you don't order from CookinPellets.com, but if you want great shipping rates on top of it, you go to those other retailers that I had mentioned. Longtime supporter of the show, CB and the gang over at CookinPellets.com. All right, joining me in the studio right now is the pit master of a competition team and business called Go Big or Go Barbecue. Their website, GoBigOrGoBarbecue.com. And during the day, you see him 
moonlighting as the owner and proprietor of Mr. Brisket. I'm just kidding. Get that big stuff out of here. As the barbecue expert over at the Mr. Brisket here in Cleveland, Ohio. It is Aaron Huntelman. Of course, we met him a few minutes ago, Aaron. Welcome into the studio. And as I'm reading the instant chat, I believe somebody had to write the last time someone was in studio. It wasn't in Willoughby, where we're at now for the last three years. It was when we were in Wycliffe. And it was show favorite, Neighbor Desmond, who was obviously my neighbor and the guy that stole my original pit barrel. So wow. welcome in to the studio. And you've seen how the sausage is made now. So as somebody who has uh, watched the show from time to time from the other side of the camera, what do you think it I, looks like behind the camera? I am wowed and amazed. This is beautiful. Is it? Yeah. I think when I show people behind it, it's like there's a lot of moving blankets and (laughs) there's a green screen behind you. By the way, this behind me, this is not a green screen. This is a real image. Like if this was a green screen, it would be distorting and all that. There is a green screen behind Aaron, but that's a real image banner behind me. I could show you to to really prove it, but I don't care that much. Um, Working on a new image, by the way, to uh, same image, but cropped a little bit differently from my guy matt sexton photographer in cleveland so that might happen in the next couple weeks Aaron, let's address the elephant in the room right off the rip if a situation comes up where my time is limited Mm -hmm. i can't get meat for my guy kevin green at the butcher shop i will message you for assistant and you are able to meet the call for help each and every time And on every occasion but one, you will, quote, drop the meat and run. In other words, you don't ring the doorbell, no casual conversation, no nothing, just the text messages minutes after the fact that the meat is in the fridge. Yeah. Am I that horrible of a person to not want to spend three minutes with to conversate about life, about meat, about live fire? I'm kind of an Internet celebrity. Maybe you want to take a selfie put it on social media like what gifts i'm a man of mystery my family is like <laughs> who's everybody that wants to talk to you <laughs> not that guy he can't wait to beat feet the hell out of it. we don't even ever see him it's like all of a sudden you come in and you have two bags of meat and you're where did that come from oh aaron dropped the he didn't say hi he never says hi hank so. gives specific instructions put in fridge leave don't talk to rempy ever <laughs> <laughs> he pays don't talk to him that's all we want all right so how are things going to mr brisk we are busy we're like i've said a couple times we have we've had wind in our sails since you came on st patrick's day it's been you know we've you know usually have your lulls in between holidays but the competition meet has just continued on especially since memorial day when someone decided to post about selling trim chicken thighs for the folks that don't know mr brisket a lot of competition folks have known about Mr. Brisket for years, especially the the more nerdy competition folks. But explain a little bit about the business of Mr. Brisket on all aspects, not just the competition side. So we're 50 year butcher shop next year. So we consider ourselves like a boutique butcher shop, prime meats, Wagyu meats, you know, custom cuts. You want it, we can get it. I can get you a pig. I can get you a lamb. You know, we'll get you whatever you want and we'll ship it wherever we want. Um, Hank and Sanford have been running it since 1974. Hank's now the full owner of it. Sanford comes in and says hi. And then sometimes I answer the phone as Hank and say I'm the owner and purveyor too. You know, we do a deli. We're selling some of the best corned beef in Cleveland. We bake it. We don't boil it. So that's a big difference between other Cleveland people. Um, You know, besides that, we're catering barbecue. We have our first barbecue pop-up next week. And we're just, you know, we're we're running with whatever ideas we have. Two years in a row, also, you've put on a, an SCA yeah. steak contest down in Canton, Ohio. Canton, Ohio, down at Oakwood Square. We've had the biggest Ohio steak competition in the past two years. Successful? Yes. Profitable. Really? Yep. Both years. You have masterminded the ultimate, quote-unquote, pitmaster's cheat code for yep. the gamers out there. With the creation of the competition box, but before we talk about that, let's talk about how this came to be, because I think most people think, as you had mentioned, about this internet storm that took hold a number of weeks ago when you posted <laughs> chicken thighs, but it was even before that, right? Yeah, I mean, a year, well, about a year before that, you know, we looked at the rules of the 
how the pork rule changed for KCBS to where you can just have the money muscle. And it was looking at a looking at a pork butt and the price of the pork butt. I'm like, we could price the money muscle side at this, and basically pay for the pork butt, and then the rest of the pork butt your profit. And we've been selling money muscle sides. I think we sold like five or six thousand dollars worth of money muscles mm. last year. You know, besides the wagyu briskets that we were already selling to everybody. When you're looking at the butt, the whole butt before you take out the money muscle um do you have a way of gauging so i I would imagine like anything in competition consistency is key so you want to get as close to i have no idea what they weigh but i'm just throwing out round numbers three pound money muscles you know uh on all pork butts so you can send those to each person so you're not getting one that's five pounds one that's a half a pound something like this how do you gauge that just in the in the cryovac or by the case so when I'm looking at the case, I'm looking for anything over 80 pounds for an eight butt case is going to give me 10 pound butts. So that, that kind of gives me the idea that everything in there is going to be big, you know, maybe seven out of eight. Sometimes you have a little one, but when we're looking at that, so basically we're, I'm just, you know, you can kind of eyeball the money muscle and then you go back to the tubes a little bit, go down and we're looking at, you know, three and a half, four pounds is what I'm shooting for. And you can, and that pretty much covers the cost of the butt. Yep. What do you do with the now money muscleless butt? Pulled pork. You know, we sell the cater the pulled pork, and then we have a lot of wholesale restaurants that are picking up the butts for their own use. Could a backyard ham and egger get a money muscleless pork butt? Yeah, ten bucks right now. I think is what he's got them on sale. Really? Yeah, I like that. I've been known to take some of those money muscleless pork because when I'm cooking pork butt for the masses. I'm not going to tell anybody there's yeah. no money muscle in there and there's going to be nobody that I know. Uh, Nobody's I getting mean, mad. None of my friends are going to be like, wait, there's no money muscle on that because it's pulled pork. And I mean, up until like four or five years ago, I didn't realize I was ruining the best part of the pork butt either. Was I was just like, wow, this part feels really nice. My first throw it in. first place call, I kind of just randomly sliced off the money muscle. I'm like, this looks good. And I put it in the box with some pulled meat and we got a 176 in the first place in a backyard competition out in cincinnati the chicken thighs as we just talked about the internet breaker when it was initially posted you had a vocal percentage of folks who thought it was the greatest thing ever but positivity never rings as loud as negativity and there were those who railed against it basically calling it cheating and that a pit master who used these already trimmed chicken thighs that you were offering for sale was indeed no pit master at all dare i say charlatan pit master <laughs> was the chicken thigh thing your idea or was it driven by a client and then you promoted it as an available service one guy just email he bought chicken thighs off the website so we have an online store he and he just bought just chicken thighs and he put in the comments can you trim for competition and i was like sure i'll try and we did like 16 of them and i'm like this shouldn't be that bad. And I never thought we would be 15, 1600 into them since Memorial day since then. Wow. So, you know, I mean, it's definitely, there's been some growing pains. There's been some learning. There's, you know, doing that many chicken thighs, you learn a little bit of what to look for more instead of it's a chicken thigh. But, you know, I think overall I was kind of my idea just to run with it and promote it. Out of the four, that seems to be the one that could be the the biggest variable. I mean, I open mm-hmm. a pack of chicken, oh, we- and I'll get you know three that are huge, three that are tiny, we- and you know, as a backyard guy, it's not like that big of a deal. I know I can either put the bigger ones on first, or you know, just kind of work around the different sizes. But the competition guys, as we had said before, consistency is key. Consistency in size helps with the cook, their whole program. So you are you opening tons of chickens just to get similarly shaped and sized chickens? Yeah. I have a picture on my phone where I went through a bunch of chicken and got all 10 ounce, well, average 10 ounce chicken thighs. We trimmed them and they ended up right at about five ounce trimmed. But if you open some of those packages, you'll get like a four ounce, just raw thigh. And you also get, I had a 17 ounce thigh, (laughs) which I'm pretty sure is off. I don't want to see that chicken, but it was, in the same package. That's like a pound by itself. Yeah. So, oh, I mean, a good chicken thigh is going to start in that eight, high eight, low ten range is what I'm looking for. 
and it just takes off like yeah i mean aside from the people shit talking it for lack it of a better term there's are, the people just start calling and say hey i yeah. saw this on facebook i uh, looked you up on the internet mm -hmm. and no we like i got shared on a really big competition facebook page and it the crazy thing is it's not just like this midwest area we're shipping i ship some out to kansas city i've shipped some out to texas we've shipped some out all the way out west coast and i mean that's so it's you know it's new customers it's a new customer base that we're building on and yeah it's just word of mouth i mean there's been you know if if you dig a little bit there are people said oh they were tiny thighs you know or this or that and i i do agree the beginning i kind of you know shooting for look more than weight and now that i've kind of learned the weight and the look it's definitely become a more polished product so you know i apologize to the to the beta testers in the very beginning is it but, still um is it still a product when they get it they might have to do some work to it like nope. you, like you said you don't want to take it no, too the, far but the thighs are done yeah the, so like the thighs are done what's the process take us through a, a day in the life of a, of a chicken skin. thigh yeah so you're pulling the chicken you know you're checking your weight pulling your skin off and then all the way off all the way off that goes to tyler tyler uh has learned a new technique of filleting off the fat instead of scraping it so he got a nice long fillet knife and he just just takes it right off in one swoop yeah like two but wow. he's doing pretty good and then you know me and the cup one other guy we you know we'll take out the fat little pocket on the one side square up the other side flip out the oyster pull the veins trim both knuckles and then roll the skin back on you know, we're averaging, you know, a good, I want to keep like a 40 thigh average a day is about where we're at. How long does it take to trim out a chicken thigh? I think we can get one, you know, if you're to look at one, like two to three minutes. And it's between the two of you doing it or between the, is it three of you guys? Or Last Wednesday oh. we had four of us and we got 80 some done. So you just wait until like a certain time of the day yep. and it's like, okay, now it's chicken thigh <laughs> trimming yeah, time? Yeah, no, we, we literally say it's thigh time and yeah. we jump in. It's usually after the lunch rush for sandwiches just go at it what does hank think about that you know hank's hank's buying all the thighs he's like oh woke up had my coffee and bought more thighs hmm. you know but it's it's keeping us busy you know like our labor is a fixed cost we're at work either way so at least we're yeah. staying busy and doing something productive so you have the pork or the money muscle you got the chicken thighs but also there's so i guess what i'm leading to is here this has now been culminated we had talked um off air a number of times leading into you know was it a month ago or whatever when you mm -hmm. released the, the competition box yep it was like july 4th ish time so it's it's a one and done yep. option tell us about the competition box so you got the 16 trim chicken thighs and you know it was like why 16 i'm like well that gives you options like we've had some guys who are like they're great but get extras just in case i mean i'm i'm far from perfect but i try to be as you know what I put in the bag is what I would cook, but some guys, you know, are not as, you're a little more picky than me or less picky than me. So you get 16 of those, three pork collars, three Wichita packing ribs, and then a 16 to 19 pound Wagyu brisket. And on the Wagyu brisket, you know, we offered to ship them whole, split them, you know, point and flat, or I'm also trimming them down to a full, like seven and a half inch, you know, ready to go brisket. Like the box size? Yep. Yeah. So we just take one of the, you know, brisket caddy jigs and go off that and it's, you know, ready to go. What's the, um, the turn in these days for brisket is, or a lot of the teams, it's all flat. splitting it, uh, like splitting it up. They're doing, so they're using point for burn ends if they're going to make them. And then it's just turning in the flat. I think everybody's eating their burn ends and turning in flat. Oh, cause it was, I don't know, a handful of years ago, you had to turn in burn ends in order to be good win but yeah. now no, they've I, gotten away from that yeah i mean you watched the barbecue usa last night i know you're keeping up with it uh the one guy he's like these burn-ins are too fatty and too tough we're not using them and it's like mm -hmm. those looked amazing you know but that's just the i think your flat's more of a consistent product you know to kind of test your skills on what's the cost of the box 3.99 shipped ground and if we have to go second day air, so you're further Texas, you're out west, you're four ninety nine in the air. Is that good? Is that a good price? I th I th like if you if you cost it out I otherwise, I mean, and plus you have labor and trimming all that shit out, so you don't have to do it when it gets there, right? Yeah, I mean, I think cost wise, if you're to buy, 
everything a la carte before shipping's like 360. Mm. But also, we just uh, we're gonna, this is a breaking news announcement. Yeah. It's a barbecue central Hold show on. exclusive news update. Greg Rampy reporting for the breaking news desk here in Cleveland, Ohio, the city that makes that breaks the most live fire breaking news across the country. Nay, the globe. And we remain here in my basement in Willoughby, Ohio, as we kick it over to Aaron Huntelman for an exclusive announcement. Breaking news. If you're going to the Wadsworth competition here in October in Ohio, we're doing it for three fifty nine delivered at the competition. Wow deal of the century it, it really i mean it is yep. you know and I mean, you got to think an 18 pound brisket at 9.99 a pound is 180 bucks of that box well i think the other thing that's easily to discount or look over is however many hours you're putting in on the brisket trimming mm-hmm. uh, i don't know what you're doing with the ribs but obviously you're doing something with the chicken thighs and then you're also doing the stuff with the pork yeah. that you're not going to have to do at home when you get the box you just gotta store it so it doesn't spoil and then take it to your competition yeah i mean the, my biggest goal was to almost get to the point where we're shipping them to the competition you just show up and start cooking i think that'd be that'd really be cool. dangerous I that'd think. be dangerous but you know i think <laughs> you know or you know like we have guys calling for the royal i said wouldn't it be cool just to have a booth for the royal we roll up with a refrigerated truck full of orders and everybody just picks them up there Who's the biggest name you're shipping competition box to? Hmm. I mean, Luke of Tire Smoke has used my chicken thighs, and he got second place call with them. I would say he's my biggest name of friends. Are uh, there are there some people that are rule number one of the show? No names, please? Yeah, there's some no names. Out oh, there. yeah? Big yeah. names? I think big for our region, yes. Mm. Not like, uh, I'm just throwing names out there, but like a, a Brad Leiniger or a Tim Shear, like, you know, team of the year type folks. Not yet. No, no. I mean, I had a big name reach out to me for a friend <laughs> that we shipped one out to, to out West for a gentleman. He's, um, he's blind, seen impaired and we shipped him a box and he competed with it out West last, last week or two weeks ago <laughs> at the, no, he did at the invitational. That's where he was. You're going to be able to answer this question. Hank weighing in three ninety nine is a bargain. I'm losing money. Yes or no? I mean, he's smiling every day, so I don't think he is. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Hank. You're not kidding anybody. You're making some money or you wouldn't be doing it at all. Hank's 10 years younger since I announced all these things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bet. 10 years younger. Uh, all right. So we have the competition box. Seems to be going strong. Would you say that the interest or the orders are continuing to tick up or have you hit at least a, a steady streak of those or is it still a little bit shoddy? No, we're, we're, you know, a good week at Mr. Brisket, I would say is, you know, like a dozen shipments. We're in the 30 shipment range. For of the, the competition box? At least we, I did 15 briskets on Friday for competition boxes. So wow. I think we shipped at least 15 this week. Wow. And then what about chicken thighs? Chicken thighs were consistently 100, 160 a week. You know, peak was like 220. I think we did one week. How much am I paying for chicken thighs only? You got, do you have to, do I have to buy them by the dozen? $5 a thigh, 16 thighs minimum. Mm, all right. Not too, that's, is that good? I mean, I think so. Yeah. I mean, shipping kind of, you got to weigh the shipping there. I mean, shipping's not a lot for that size box and that weight. Yeah. But I mean, it's just, it's more about your time. Like, that's where I'm at. Like, you know, I got kids. I don't have time to do that. So, Derek can wait a second. Yeah. I had one more follow-up question. So, with all of this box stuff, what about adding another value add to it? Maybe you haven't even thought about it yet. I'm going to give you a great idea. You can tell me to go piss up a rope if you don't like. What about adding greens for the box as well? Someone now brought- you're one and done. The only thing, somehow, like uh, attaching it to the uh, turn. Well, you, they give you turn in boxes there, yeah. but I mean, what about greens? Why no. not? No, you've seen guys where they build the box at home. They do the double flip of the box, and you know, they somebody brought that up the there. You know, I'd like to do sauce and rub ads. You know, an injection somehow. I don't know how we could get it in the box there, but even like a separate box with a nice shipping rate for everything, I think is the next step in the evolution. How's the go big or go barbecue business? We're beating last year's sales. So, yep. right. you know, we're rocking and rolling there. All right. We'll pick it up in a few moments or as we have some open spots here, maybe top of the second hour. Hank wants to know if he can make money on greens. 
Probably. I mean, Hank, a businessman can make money on anything, right? Some, some kind of green. Right. You can make some green on greens. <laughs> All right, Aaron Huntelman is joining us from Go Big or Go Barbecue for the rest of the show here. And by the way, if you're interested in that competition box, you know where to find them over at Mr. Brisket. You can find them on Facebook as well. Before we get to Derek, we talk to you about my new favorite cooker that's sitting in the backyard, the Primo Grill. Yes. So for all the talk of... Dealing with charcoal, and it's messy, and I got to mess with the bottom damper, and I got to mess with the top damper. I don't know. Maybe it's because this is the way I came up 100 years ago into the game, but I have re-fallen in love with the whole romance of building a fire, keeping temperature, and getting a different flavor profile than I was getting off of the pellet cookers. Without question... And everybody in the family likes it. And if I might say, not everybody in the house is a fan of charcoal flavor. So luckily, I have the accessories of the deflector plates. So I wrap those up in foil, and then I put those over the flame or over the fuel source, and then meat above that. Now the foil makes easy cleanup, so as the fat renders down, it just sticks right on the foil, so no worrying about that. And then it's not all cascading over into the flames and giving you that charcoal flavor that maybe some of you enjoy. I enjoy it. Like when I cook on the pit barrel or badger barrel, I like that. Girls in the house, gals in the house, not big fans of that. So you're able to marginalize that to a large degree with the deflector plates of the Primo. Plus they got tons of other accessories. They got rotisseries. They got pizza inserts. They have all sorts of great stuff. You know what I just found out? If you take the cooking grate the way it would normally sit, you can invert it and then flip it down and it actually gets much closer to the coal. So I was searing some steaks off Saturday for dinner. Man, that thing gets hugely hot, hugely quickly. Poor English. Sorry about that. Only sold through dealers, so find one near you. Primogrill.com. That's primogrill.com. Look at all the ovals that your or, uh, that your dealer has and then buy the oval that is best for you. That's primogrill.com. Follow them on Facebook. Follow them on Instagram. And join the Oval Revolution. That's actually not a saying, but I'm just making it up here this evening. Hashtag Oval Revolution. How about that? We are back with Derek Riches right after this. Stick around. Be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Stern, Jim Rome, Dan Patrick, and Greg Rempe. The Mountain Rushmore of talk show entertainment. Now, let's get back to the Barbecue Central Show. And this portion being brought to you by Fireboard. You can monitor up to six different shows simultaneously. Connect to Wi-Fi for cloud-based monitoring or connect via Bluetooth. If you have Alexa or the Google Assistant in your home, you're in luck because Fireboard is fully integrated with both. You can find out more by visiting fireboard.com or call 816-945-2232. The fourth Tuesday of the month means it's time to go to the hotline and welcome in the most respected barbecue journalist in this business, he is a Barbecue Central Show's guest Hall of Famer. He is Derek Riches from DerekRiches.com. Uh, Derek, happy to have you aboard here this evening. We do have an in-studio guest who is uh, Aaron Huntelman from Go Big or Go Barbecue. So he may or may not be jumping in with some of his own questions here this evening. Uh, help us out because we were trying to remember. Did we Were we off last month, Derek, or were we on last month? Yeah, we were off because you bumped me for someone else. Who was it? <laughs> I don't remember. That was a month ago. It had to have been a big name. I mean, usually I wouldn't just uh, go bumping you uh, willy nilly. Was it Noah? Gainville? Huh. Maybe. I don't know. Badger, Die, maybe but, it was Badger Barrel. Might have been. Yeah, now that you mention it, I think it might have been Badger Barrel. Now that you, uh, you're talking out loud here. What do you think about Badger Barrel? I mean, it looks good. I mean, it's interesting. It's a departure for them. Do you think it? Uh, uh, do you think it's some kind of a a rail against what the pit barrel clientele is? Can you do both of those? Well, 
<clears throat> if you notice, there seems to be a clear separation between the two of them. Yeah, you, go to pit, you go to pitbarrel.com. There's not much. There's not mention of Badger there. You go to Badger. It's like, yeah, there's some. Hey, we're pit barrel people, but this is a very clear separation, and and that makes perfect sense because the whole the whole point of uh, the pit barrel was it doesn't need vents, it doesn't need adjustment. You put build a fire you put the food in there you let it go you don't worry about it yeah now he's got uh, a much more classic smoker i mean you put a water pan in the bottom of this no nope. and you got a weber smoky mountain right right you know i mean that's that's really what it is it's a old style vertical you know oh. trash can smoker are you a meat hanger <sighs> sometimes i'm the, i don't you know there are times it's like I'll do it and I'll be just you know like check on it a lot because I worry it's going to let go right yeah, it's yeah. Just, it freaks me out a little bit Aaron are you a meat hanger no no I get afraid too it's going to fall on the fire and it's mm. like well so the thing that I've always struggled with not hanging is that you can't get nearly the volume of food in the pit barrel on the grate that you can on the hang. I can get oh, even absolutely. in the pit barrel junior I think you can get 8 racks of ribs or, or at least oh, yeah, 6 yeah. racks of ribs on the hang but you're going to get like one cut in half on the grate. Yeah, no, you're absolutely you're absolutely right. I mean it gives you all it gives you the full use of all that space. Mm. Um so it, you know, and and there's a lot of smokers out there that have kind of had that that design to it. It's it's an old classic idea, um, but um, uh, I I you know I mean I've had several pit barrels and 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 I've used them several times and you know there, there's literally been the time it's like oh I'm I'm hanging a rack of ribs in here because I'm not going to eat more than a rack of ribs mm. and there's not you know at the time maybe there's just nobody around to eat it but you know you have that volume capacity then that's great you like the price point yeah yeah it, it's a good price point i think yeah it's great uh i'm interested to see if it stays there uh i mean i can't imagine it's going to go up in price well i mean i don't know <laughs> i mean it's i mean i've put them th so I, I mean i have both i have i've had a flagship pit barrel um, forever until neighbor Desmond stole it from me before he moved and then I have a pit barrel junior and now I have the badger barrel and I put the badger barrel together with my own two hands and it only took me 10 hours and I mean there's a noticeable uh, I'm going to use the word quality but I only made it in a thickness way um, when you touch and hold the pit barrel and then you touch and hold the badger I mean instantly you can tell that the pit barrel seems to be a more premium product and a price tag to reflect that. So, um, yeah, I was looking I at the weight it, between it, the two of them in this environment of potential financial stress, which I'm still not sure if I believe or not. It's a, a great position product, if nothing else, from a price point perspective. Yeah, no, it it, it is that. Yeah. And this, the the simple truth of the matter is, is that you know, for you know, a lot of the average backyard cooks and stuff. You don't need, you know, that much. I mean, uh, you know, I had a pit barrel for a decade. Yeah. And I actually had the before, like, the new paint went on it, like the very yeah. first version of it. Yeah. And I had some rusting here and there. Yes. But it wasn't going anywhere, and I wasn't aggressive about getting after it. But, <laughs> um, but you know, I mean – it's you know it, there's there's a market for everything you know and, and there's there's got to be a wide price range for things so it makes sense you up to speed on what's happening with memphis and may or do you not really care i'm up to speed i don't know that i care you've been to a number um, of memphis and mays right i have you ever a been memphis to memphis and May's and May's a lot of fun. no never gonna, i'm your video guy next year when we go i don't even know if there's gonna be one next year Aaron, so hold your horse <laughs> So what what's I, what do you think about this whole deal? I love Memphis in May. It's a lot of fun. It, it's a great party, um, and that's what it is to me. It's it's you know they, they say that the Memphis in May and the Royal they're kind of like big parties that happen to have a barbecue competition sometimes. Um, <laughs> it's not that it's necessary. 
but uh <laughs> is, is the majesty of memphis and may the location off of beale street and then also being able to go out of uh tom lee park into beale street and having it be in that just grassy field and now the reconstruction of it has made it an untenable situation going forward yeah i mean from the price point you know i mean they put a lot of money into the park and they're not going to want to let it get trashed and so they're clearly sending a message i come in and saying hey <clears throat> um you might want to think differently about this i don't know that i would be interested in a memphis in may if it was out in a big parking lot uh it is it's it's great that it's there and then you can walk off a of beale straight into the competition you know a lot of people come in at night a lot of people who don't know or care anything about barbecue come into memphis in may at night to party and to have a good time and um you you take it out of that space you lose all of mm. that so where should it go I, or should it die i don't know <sighs> i mean i don't think it will die I think it could get changed a lot. I mean, I don't like the fact that they moved the Royal. I like that it was kind of in this weird trashy under the freeway next to a, an abandoned arena that was populated entirely by rats. And that, you know, it was. There was charm to this, that, are you saying? It was charm to it. And okay. it was <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And then you put it out in a giant parking lot and there's no. You know, I mean, the Royal was had division, it had space and, you know, Memphis and May had that, you know, because it's just this big, long, mile long competition that, you know, you can wander back and forth through and it's kind of a maze like thing. And but they, so they've moved the American system. Royals like three different times. It was at the the, the, the cattle yard, whatever the hell it was, uh, Kemper or whatever. Like you're talking about, yeah. have the dark side and the main side, whatever. Then they right. moved it to the football stadium. Then they moved it to the speedway. And then it moved maybe back to the football stadium. Then it finally landed back on the speedway, where I think it will now remain. Through all of that moving, plus they had transferred dates a number of different times, so it wasn't always that whatever date in September. Uh, so they ran through some of that logistic nightmare as well. But still there, still holding its cachet people still want to win it uh i don't know if they want to win the open more than the invitational depending on who you talk to but darren worth from iowa smoky d said a couple weeks ago he's won it three times he wants to win it fourth time i said aren't you getting greedy he's like you can never win it enough times and what do i mean by that it means that with all this moving and all this nonsense there's still value in it so it's a long way to go to say could you Still, could you move Memphis in May and still have it feel like Memphis in May? They're two different beasts in my mind. The, KCBS can say that they have a KCBS World Championship that happens, but the Royal is still it. The Royal is still the thing to win. It's just it's it, it it's your KCBS title, mm. and nothing is is going to change that because you're winning the Royal. The other stuff. You know, you win the Royal, you win the Jack, you win Memphis and May. Those are the three that people consider having a value to it. But Memphis and May is a very different thing. It's a pork competition. It's got a completely different set of judge, judge, you know, rules. There's, it's considered more subjective and who wins. Um, it's more about the ambiance. It's about the place. It's, it's more connected that way. I mean, they could hold the Royal wherever they wanted. I think you'd still get people going, I'm going to win the Royal. If mm -hmm. it's in Anchorage, Alaska, it doesn't, you know, whatever. It's still the Royal. But Memphis and May is kind to me, and maybe I'm just romantic about it. It's Memphis and May is the thing that happens in Memphis. It's on the river. You're right there. You're watching the barges go up and down while people are cooking barbecue. You can wander off to Beale Street. You can get food there if you want. You can get food at the, you know, at the event. You can do what you want it's part of the city so it's just kind of i think the logistics of memphis parks sitting there going hey we've got this big empty space that kind of gets used occasionally why don't we make it into a space where everyone can go all the time yep. where it's got stuff it's got amenities that can be used 
but that means a big investment. They put a lot of money into it, and now they're going to come back and say, hey, it's going to cost us a lot to relawn everything and fix fix it up after an event like that. Carol Coletta, maybe that's her name, the CEO of Memphis River Parks Partnership, said, and I quote, kind of quote, this was a joint effort. They, they consulted Memphis in May. They built this park at the behest, they, or they configured it at the behest of what Memphis and May wanted. Do you believe that? The answer is in no. The sense, okay, in the sense that there was compromises going on and that those compromises didn't necessarily listen to everybody involved. But the thing of it is, is you also got to understand Memphis and May isn't a barbecue group. Memphis and May is a city group designed to kind of promote that. If they can, if they could double Beale Street you know, Music Festival and cut the barbecue competition out and get all their money that way, I don't think that would bother them. I've talked with people. No, in Memphis of course it would bother them. That's the big. I think it, the barbecue competition is bigger than the blues part. Well. Yeah, that's just, in my opinion, because the blues part hasn't been terribly well managed. I mean, it's like, I've looked at the lineup. I'm like, I don't. I like blues. I listen to blues. You're, you're the only you one here? that listens to blues, Derek. Aaron, you listen to blues? <laughs> no. Of course you don't. Come on. Get that big stuff out of here. It's rock and roll only and then barbecue. Yeah. Let's go. Well. You live the rock right. and roll lifestyle, Derek. Then, Are you kidding? Greg loves what going you to the Rock need and Roll Hall doing. of Fame. <laughs> yes, I love you going need, to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, too. <laughs> you need to get the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame barbecue competition yes. going. In Cleveland? That's the that, In Cleveland. It, all right. And Aaron will supply all the meat for free to all teams yes. that show up. You've heard it here first. <laughs> Hank, Hank hopefully signed out for that yeah, one. I didn't know. That it's a, that's a goal of ours is we have some Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh people like higher up in the rock and roll hall of fame that our customers of mr brisket and that's the goal is to sit down and say hey how can we put on a state competition or something over there it's really but it also comes down to the exact same thing of can we tear up your grass for a weekend and you okay and you're okay with it because there's i don't think there's a lot of room yeah. there to park trailers no not i said maybe the muni lot i said you could do muni lot or you could do burke lakefront airport yeah um that i mean that would give you all the space you want you got a whole airport out there but mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll Shut down all the streets for a week and just call it yes, good. Yeah. It's Cleveland. Yeah. It's not no like it's Chicago. Anyway. Nobody cares about that. I mean, you'd shut down yeah. Chicago. I mean, they shut down Chicago for a friggin' NASCAR race. You can shut down the streets of Cleveland for a month and I, nobody wouldn't even notice. If you got enough big names behind it, yes. I think that you could sell it. Yes. Well, mm-hmm. Mr. Brisket's there the first big name. Barbecue Central show, second big name. I mean, everybody else is small peanuts after that. Yeah. Derek, is Guga doing more harm than good with his crazy videos? I don't think he's doing any harm because I don't think people who cook watch any of it. No, you're no. kidding. Everybody watches it. No. Obviously, look at the views. I'm Aaron, you watch Guga? When I see it pop up and he goes, I'm eating a four-year-old steak and I see what happens. Well, and it's like, I think I have Guga in studio with me. Do you hear that? <laughs> I hear a voice twin. Very good. All right. But it's just, I don't, it, it, it's, for, it's, it's four it, views. It's a, 14-year-old, it's a 14-year-old kid in junior high messing with his school lunch to gross people out. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, but it, it people watch it. Look. People don't watch Food Network because they want to learn to cook. They watch Food Network because they're fascinated by food. Hmm. Nobody said, nobody, nobody who likes Gordon Ramsay cooks. I do. You like Gordon Ramsay? Yeah, I like him. Yeah, he's a nice guy, but he's nothing like what he's on TV. Of course. But who is? the thing about it, it's, it's, it's food entertainment, and people will jump for food entertainment. Hmm. So, you know, well then, why just, isn't uh, why isn't barbecue television rocking and rolling? Is it just boring? Heaven forbid! Don't tell me the truth. Uh, okay, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Save me the pain. Are you watching Barbecue Look, USA or Barbecue Brawl? No. <laughs> you are. They do that, did they do Come that again? On. Yes, again. I had Michael Simon hate, on the show a couple weeks ago. We talked I hate all food about competition shows. Uh, Barbecue competition USA shows are, isn't a food competition show. It's a okay, it's a journey along the competition trail to peek in and see what teams are doing and so forth. 
And I think okay. this season's and a lot. This season's better because he hit up like the Pig Beach thing last weekend, which wasn't like a sanctioned event. It was just you know, some out of the way, yeah, stuff. Not just the normal Casey Best Trail stuff. And that's you know, I mean, that's good that you know, non mainstream stuff can kind of get some attention. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I like to see that, but the market is pretty limited for that. And the problem with barbecue TV is you kind of cook a lot of the same stuff over yeah. and over again. Yeah. And that becomes a hard sell to a broad audience. And, you know, nobody who's listening to that is like, oh, but I don't want to, you know, I mean, I've seen someone cook a brisket once. I'm good. No, they're like, yeah. uh, I want to know more. Right. I, there's more to know. And yeah, you can dig as deep as you want into a subject. Most people don't care. That's why Malcolm Reed is popular and the TV shows aren't as popular, probably. Because you can get all the information that you're probably craving from a Malcolm. Yeah, no, Malcolm does a great job of explaining what to do and what's going on. You know, you know, and as far as the Google guy goes, it's like I was uh, you, you brought that up. And it's like I hadn't seen one in a while. Yeah. I hadn't. Did you uh, watch the, the one kind of, where uh, he calls out the, the steakhouses for passing off? fake dry age steak I, yeah but who didn't know that <laughs> i didn't know that oh god yeah i mean this is a, it's just like when they say oh chemically this is a modified. Really nice steak is it choice is it prime i don't know <laughs> i have i have a thing and my tongue will swell up if i eat um flavor enhancers like msg like the MSG or any of the like the flavor enhancers or the or the tenderizers. Yeah. So if I go to a steakhouse and they're using a lot of chemicals to enhance a bad steak to make it, you know, have you ever heard of co- Coco Aminos? Uh, yeah. We had a customer I asking about a, that the other day. You put them in your steak. I've heard of it, but in you know, I mean, that's why I don't go to Ruth Chris. Because they put cocoa, cocoa camino. I don't know if they. Use, I don't know that they put that in that. They use they use meat tenderizers and flavor enhancers to make their steak mm. seem better than it is. Mm. But the, the thing of it is, I was watching that guy, and the commercial in his video was for scent flavored water. It was for a water thing. It's like you put it that, on the straw or whatever, right? Right, and it and it makes you smell something and think that the water has that flavor. This is like, regular water. The, mm-hmm. well, it's just wet regular water. Wow! This is the perfect product for people who don't cook, who know nothing about food, but think that water must have a flavor in order to be for them to drink it. Hmm. Wow. So that's the market. That's that's who they're going for. All right, last question. I should have I should have led with this, but I didn't i apologize uh, youtube poll question of the week offset pits produce the best tasting barbecue you can eat yes or no yes of course aaron yes all right i also agree Greg. how what okay. yes 100 yes <laughs> however 50 50 split still in the youtube chat 50 percent yes and 50 percent no which is surprising to me which can only lead me to surmise that 50% of the audience have never had a really good offset pit barbecue when compared to everything else. Because to me, there's just no better flavor than when a properly run offset pit is producing barbecue. But I mean, don't and take it from us three issue. experts yeah. for crying no, out loud. Yeah. I think that's a reason. I mean, who's using an offset up here? Me. Well, I mean, like commercially. Uh, the closest one would be Mabel's, but he's running a JR oil or so yeah. technically not an offset, but I mean, it's, it's like close enough, right? I mean, it's real fire and it's, yeah. it's a rotisserie. But, yeah, it works. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, other than I mean, that, I live in Austin, everything's offset. Yeah, of yeah, course. I mean, That's why you have the best old, tasting barbecue, right? Old hickories and things uh, like that. Absolutely. Uh, what's, what are you uh, writing about that's going to shatter the live fire foundations here <laughs> coming up? Well, we promise to talk about uh my article on yes. uh food safety temperatures next time yeah, we'll so do that in september we're still gonna plug for that all right then we'll look forward to that in september otherwise go to derekriches.com derek always appreciate the time and we'll see you in said september it's good to talk to both of you all right take Bye. care Derek Riches right there 
DerekRiches.com, the website, and check him out. He's got product reviews and recipes. You can buy books that he has written there. And tune in next month as we talk about temperatures, stuff you didn't know, stuff nobody's telling you about. Have I teased you enough to tune in next month? I hope so. All right, we're going to wrap up the first hour. Stick around. We'll be right back. Continuing to produce incredibly mediocre content in an exceptionally professional way. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rampey. We thank Derek Riches for joining us the last segment. Again, DerekRiches.com, his website. Uh, Hank in the chat said he's very excited about putting together an SCA event at the Rock Hall. So... I still think that there's just a, a, a lack of overall space. Although, they could cordon off that wall area yeah. in the front. Yep. Thinking tents only. Yeah. You know, no trailers, that tents only. Up, right? yeah. Bring it back old school, as we say. Yeah. And have the first SCA. At the, we could call it like steak and roll. Yeah. Rock and uh, steak. Rock and steak. Or get some other stupid pun like that. Throw uh, Cleveland and everything's named Cleveland. That's right. All right. Uh, that's the first hour. We're going to step away and reload. We'll be back in the second hour. Once again, Aaron Huntelman from Go Big or Go Barbecue is here. And we will see you here in just a few minutes. Stick around. We'll be right back.